Hello everyone and welcome to a new segment on the channel where I will be focusing on battle guides for the different races in Warhammer 3. And my goal for these videos is, is just to provide um, some helpful knowledge regarding a faction's strengths and weaknesses on the battle map. And therefore these videos will primarily be for those of you who may be new to Warhammer 3 or to the Total War gaming scene in general. But it could also serve as sort of a refresher for those of you who have played Warhammer or Total War in the past and have decided to kind of come back um, to Warhammer 3 with the recent news involving um, Immortal Empires. Now before I get into the thick of the video, I do want to make a few side notes. The first one being that I do play on very hard campaign and hard battle difficulty and realize that legendary campaign and very hard battle difficulty is slightly different um, in terms of damage output and potential, but after putting over 1300 hours into Warhammer 3 as of, excuse me, as of right now, I believe that what I will discuss applies to all difficult all difficulties regardless whether it's on easy all the way up to very hard battle difficulty. Um, so hopefully by the end of this video and each video that I will be making in the future, um, you will be able to learn some tips and tr tips and tricks for each faction and some sound strategy tactics in the battle map. Uh, the the last little kind of side note I want to kind of let you guys know on I won't be covering um, topics such as like single entity spamming, spamming or one man doom stacks because generally speaking those don't require a lot of um, strategy involved on the battle map it's mainly just getting the right units getting a few damage dealing spells or mortis engine and that's it and that doesn't really require a ton of um, you know actual strategy fighting an enemy but anyway um without further ado let's just kind of jump into the to the faction that we'll be talking about today and that will be cafe um so i want to just briefly remind those of you who may be familiar with um warhammer and the setup of a campaign but definitely those of you who are brand new to the game and um it's just to let you guys know or to remind you again on a few pretty important things that you, I highly recommend doing before you even start a campaign and that is that you read the racial mechanics the faction effects and legendary lord effects that you will, will potentially be utilizing in a campaign so for Cathay specifically we have Zhao Ming and Miao Ying as their faction or legendary lords excuse me and on the top here we have the faction mechanics that they utilize um, I will discuss the yin and yang mechanic for Cathay later on in the video, but you can obviously already see just looking at these few screenshots that depending on the lord you choose, it could definitely affect the units you may want to recruit or how much you utilize a mechanic, um, which in this instance is the ivory road mechanic for Cathay where Zhao Ming provides a um, cargo capacity increase by 20% while Miao Ying doesn't. That doesn't mean Miao Ying sucks at using the mechanic, it's just that Zhao Ming provides a little bit of a buff to it. So the reason why again these reading these kind of things are important because they can very very heavily kind of dictate maybe how you want to play a campaign or what things you may want to focus on so it's just something to kind of be on the lookout for especially again if you're new to the game and you're not sure what really the faction or race is about it's just a really easy way to kind of get the general gist of what you will be getting yourself into there um, but without further ado and enough being said about that let's get into the bulk of the video and the first three parts of the of the video that I will be discussing are basic formations, unit types, and the importance of a clear line of sight for your army. Now the reason why the three topics are put together right away is because they sort of go together really well. Um, your battle formations are really more or less dictated by the type of units you're fielding in each battle, and a good line of sights a good line of sight kind of depends on whether or not you even need one so basically if you just you know if you have missile units then you're gonna need a good line of sight um, for them that way they actually you know shoot the enemy that you want them to be shooting at now for Cathay they specialize in a very balanced army sort of approach and composition due to the yin yang mechanic which provides generally speaking a statistical boost um, to, to each unit if they are within kind of the realm of um, kind of like their I think of it as like their aura basically so if I highlight 
or just select the Jade Warriors here, you see this like gray outline. That is like their area of effect basically. And so utilizing the yin and, yin and yang mechanic works like this. Melee units have a yang attribute, which here you can see it right here in their description. While missile units, if I select a crane gunner here, uh, excuse me, they have a yin mechanic. So you need each one unit of yin, one unit of yang to be within each other's like area here and then they will receive that bonus which here you can see with the highlighted parts the missile strength the leadership and speed is green that means that it's been ink being increased and I did set a celestial dragon guard unit out here just to compare and see the difference if I hover over another celestial dragon guard unit that does have it you can see the one with the mechanic being applied to it it excuse me it has more leadership has more melee attack and melee defense um, which all those things are fantastic it works really well for Cathay because they are a fairly defensive faction so more leadership more melee defense is all good things for them there and speaking of the type of basic formations that they typically do they are fairly defensive and that's totally okay you know not every faction is just going to be up in your face just smash mouth or just using a bunch of magic sometimes it is a little more defensive and balanced approach and that's totally okay it's really important that no matter what faction you play that you you utilize their strengths it you know it, there are so many races in the game that if you want to play a certain way they have a faction or a legendary lord or a race for that particular play style um, and Another thing to notice is how I don't simply have my units just in the line in terms of the formation because there is magic in the game. So if I were to take my um, melee units here and just make them into this line, or even worse, if I were to you know make it into a line like this, right? Now there is magic in the game that does bombardments, does like a kind of how that is would have been set up if I had it like this, where spells would kind of like go down that line. Um, they have vortex spells that move in an area. So all those things, the more units you have just kind of grouped together, um, you know, the more damage those are going to do. So the reason why, as Cathay, I kind of do this turtle formation, I kind of think of it, um, or a hexagon, or ha whatever shape you want to think of it as. Um, it really just provides you a way not only to be defensive, but also to receive, still receive the the yin and yang mechanic buffs while also mitigating any damage you may take um, for magic spells or, or bombardments and what have you so instead of you know maybe losing three or four units to a spell you may only be taking damage to one especially if you're kind of distracted doing other things while um, the enemy is casting spells on you so it's really handy just to kind of have this kind of fit formation now it, it obviously does depend on who you're going up against so you know definitely pay attention to what your enemy is bringing to the table but again in general this is just kind of the general formation I typically use for Cathay because it works really well um, um, for them because it allows the the archers here to shoot in between the gaps the end you know your melee units are not far from re uh, reinforcing one another or closing up a gap if the enemy tries to flank you um, it makes it really easy for the again the missile units just to kind of swivel around and shoot different areas it's all just really great things um, that work really well for Cathay um, the other thing to note with your um, type of formation you you're using are the unit types which is kind of the second thing uh, that we'll be discussing and in regards to knowing kind of like what you should put into your army um, there are a few things to consider one is what kind of enemy are you going to be facing you know are they for example are they gonna be fast-paced and aggressive or will they be slow and defensive or will they have a lot of magic potential or a lot of flanking potential it really just kind of depends and those are examples but very important things to remember uh, because knowing your enemy has a massive impact on what you kind of can kind of expect what will happen in the battle but also ways to counter the enemy once the battle begins for example if I click on some of my units here if I'm saying going up against of large entities right I'm going to want to bring a lot of anti-large to the to the battle because they have a bonus here that provides extra melee attack um, when fighting against larger entities and since Cathay is a very defensive faction you know they need their um, their front line 
or just melee units to be able to hold the line as long as they can. So their missile units and their um, magic that they utilize in, in battles is able to dish out a bunch of damage. And typically speaking, I say typically because it's not always necessarily true, but for Cathay it definitely is. Their anti-large units are typically typically very tanky, especially Celestial Dragon Guard. Now, you won't be getting those to the later campaigns, uh, later stages of your campaigns, but the Jade Warrior Halberds and the Jade Warriors themselves are really tanky. They're really good at holding the line. They got good melee stats if I just hover over them. They got good leadership. They got good armor. The Jade Warriors themselves have shields, so they're able to block some basic missile fire coming directly at them. It just really works really, really well um, for Cathay's formations, for how they play. It, it just is all good thumbs up, really, really good. Um, on the flip side of that, Cathay doesn't have anything specific for their, for their infantry. But another um, description that you'll probably notice with, within playing uh, Warhammer is an anti-infantry. Now those are your flankers, your high, you know, high damage, your heavy hitters. And so those are things really to pay attention to when not only for you personally, but also your, your enemy that you're going, going up against. So again, you can kind of anticipate how the enemy is going to approach you. If they have a bunch of you know, missile units, if they have a bunch of anti-large, they're probably going to be less aggressive because you know, they want to utilize their um, strengths as well. So it's just something to be on the lookout for. Um, and something obviously to pay attention to because you don't want to be you know bringing up some peasant units here not that peasant spearmen are terrible for Cathay but they're definitely not going to hold the line as as long as say Jade Warriors and definitely not as long as the Celestial Guard um, units and lastly with the the first three steps here is a clear line of sight now I have it set up pretty well here for my units um, and when I say a clear line of sight, I mean there's nothing blocking, excuse me, there's nothing blocking obviously their line of sight. Now, an easy way to do this is to just zoom in on the unit. Now if you zoom in and you can see the enemy, then the unit can see the enemy. Now if I would have set, say, a unit behind this hill, just right back here, if we just zoom back here a little bit, right? If I were to put a unit right here, just right here in this formation, I can't see that unit, which means their arc is going to be blocked, which means they're not going to be shooting very accurately, which means they're just not going to be utilized effectively. So when using artillery and missile units, which you highly recommend using with Cathay, they're really good at damage dealing. They got a lot of, lot of powerful units within their missile and artillery units. It's very, very important that you have a good line of sight. Now, not every army may be balanced. You may be different, but typically speaking, um, your armies will sort of look like this. This isn't, generally speaking, an army I wouldn't necessarily recruit. This is just a custom battle, and I use more unit variety for the video's purpose. Video's purpose, purposes, I guess. But again, short and sweet. Have a clear line of sight. It will make massive mass a massive impact on how well your missile units actually do um, in terms of damage dealing but moving on to the next part of the video are control groups now personally I don't use a lot of control control groups if you've watched any of my live streams um, I've just been able to I've, I've got enough experience within um, my life in playing Total War that I've been able to micromanage a little more but nonetheless unit or control groups are pretty handy at you know just selecting an area of s certain units or giving commands all at once for example if I have all these melee units here selected and I put them in a control group and I hit the formation attack and then I just for the purposes of the video if I select on each one you can see that the formation attack has been applied to all of them now if I want to take it off all at once I just untick it once I have the group selected and you can see that they're all they have, it has all been deselected for them. And the same thing goes for their missile units. If I select them, put them on fire at will, they all go on to fire at will um, there as well. So it's, it's just something mainly for, especially the, the you know brand new players to Warhammer, it's just something to help with your micromanaging. If you don't want to pause the battle when fighting it, it just helps you move around and maintain the fight a little easier there. Now, lastly, the thing I want to discuss about um, for 
Um, some strengths and weaknesses for Cathay are their lords, their heroes, and army abilities. Now in this fight, I don't have it, but they do have a army ability for Celestial Bombardment. That is very handy. That can kind of nuke a unit from here and there. It's, it's kind of a very mild version of a Ikiclaw Doom Rocket. But anyway, in terms of a lord's abilities, right? If I select the lord here, and your abilities will vary on the lord you have. But if I just hit play here, right? I can select the lord. And say I want to give this missile unit some better accuracy and reload skill. So I select it, boom. I click on that unit. You see their stats have been boost, boosted for a short time, right? So it's really important to kind of look into those um, abilities, whether it's been provided via the skill tree, via the, um, the um, items they carry. It's really important to look into those things because you never know and I can't tell you how many times I have seen a single item like a Helm of Discord or um, the uh, Ballistics, uh, I think it's the Ballistics Calibration for a lot of engineer type heroes that provide a area buff for whatever it may be or area debuff that has just changed the tide in a battle. Um, so it, it's really important to check any items that you made to um, provide a lord or a hero and it's it's just a really good way and very important way to keep an eye out on the things that will help your army in a fight you know if i don't in this case you know i don't have many cav units so you know applying the charge bonus is probably not going to help a whole lot you know for any unit here especially a missile unit so it's just something to kind of be aware of again when you're going into a fight and also to be aware of the enemies all of these things i have talked about the lord's heroes armies and abilities the unit types um the f the formations the ai will be using are all very important things to to know and be aware of um, when you're going into a battle um, but that's all i have for you regarding cathay i hope you found the video helpful and feel a, more, a little more confident in understanding cathay's units and their armies the yin and yang mechanic on how that works well together, how their melee units, you know, work and pair really well with their missile units, the clear line of sight, and uh, everything else that we've discussed in this video today. I hope it, you know, does um, does everyone some sort of good. And obviously, as I make more of these videos, I'll get better at making them. I know I'm, I'm fairly rusty with this first one, so I do apologize. But definitely don't forget to leave a like and comment down below um, on your thoughts of the video, things you think I may have missed, things that you may want me to address for other factions um, or, or things like that. Just, just to provide some uh, constructive feedback or even potentially some constructive criticism just so I know if uh, I'm really helping you guys out or things that I should be adding into these videos. Uh, but again, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying the content. Um, it truly does make a huge impact for me and the community and my channel itself. And again, just let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. And I will see you guys again um, very soon with the next video or live stream. And again, thank you for your support and I will see you all again soon. Bye.